Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, interactive watch faces, and it's going to be more focused on the user experience side and how to design interactive watch faces, but I think it could be a good, interesting talk for developers as well. How to think about your, your watch faces when you design them. Um, like before we start, I think probably most people know what the Android Wear is. Like, does everybody know what Android Wear is? Is anyone wearing Android Wear? Okay. So for those of you who don't know Android Wear, Android Wear is like Google's uh, wearable OS <coughs> platform. And it provides you uh, notifications and uh, immersive app experiences and thousands of cool watch faces. So this in combination of like the with the many devices that have been launched out there and plus the ones that have been announced, you can pretty much like literally, as it says on the slides, you can actually wear what you want. It's, you can totally personalize your experience. And one of the coolest things you can do with Android Wear we released in the <coughs> uh, previous release was to make uh, interactive watch faces, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So before we enter like watch faces, I just want to give you like a very quick overview of like what are the experience, user experience entry points that uh, users have with Android Wear. So you have your watch faces, that's your classic watch experience. You have notifications that are bridged from your phone or even kind of uh, thrown by apps on your watch. You have micro apps, which are like mini versions of apps on, from your phone that run in your watch that provide a little more immersive experiences. And we have voice and actions. That means that you demand something from your watch. You talk to it, you launch an, uh, an action. Uh, but let's focus on watch faces, especially inter in the interactive watch faces uh, part. Um, so when you look at this continuum here, this is like an example of a fictitious uh, step counter watch face. So on the left-hand side, you have like just your classic watch face. It's just time. As you progress towards the right, you have um, like one data point and time. So you see around uh, the tickers that you're showing your step count. And you can add more data as you go. You can add like another data point plus a ticker. Or you can just, at on the far right, you can just show just um, data and just with a little hint of time. So watch faces, when they show data, they become more relevant for, like, for your personal experience and they become more interesting, right? And uh, I'm just gonna do a little like break here and plug a little bit like our next talk. So <clears throat> when you, uh, for every stage of, of your watch face, we have a thing called always on or ambient mode. It's something that kind of saves power and stays on if you don't interact with it. So it's actually a very good way for getting like uh, <clears throat> glanceable data and information without actually even interacting with the watch face. It's a nice way to save power and have like a longer user experience. We're gonna talk about this in the next uh, um, talk and if you wanna stick around, uh, please do. So going back to watch faces, like here when I show this continuum here, you see that you know like you have to choose a layout. So I, like I went through all these variations and I see like oh yeah, Maybe I like the third one on the left, and like, but you know that makes it kind of difficult for users. Like, why do you have to choose choose just one fixed way of showing the watch face? Perhaps you can combine different things. Perhaps you can have number one combined with number two. And how do you do that, right? So that's why we came up with interactive watch faces. So if you look at this watch face, it's pretty much your classic watch face with a little hint of data or like some entry point like we call complications, something that sits on top of a watch face, that can actually open another activity or do something else. So let's say you tap on this, and then you get another state. So you combine two states in, into one. And you can add more states because you can add other interactive uh, tap targets that can open other activities or do other things to your watch face. So it's kind of actually a, a good way to just like have more density without like cluttering the UI. So um, now we're going to talk about like, some concepts you need to understand before you go uh, on designing your watch faces. So why do you want to a, make a, a watch face interactive, right? So like, what's the point? So like, my, my first thing is like, I want to provide more data. I want to provide more information. But you don't want to do that by cluttering the UI. You can do that in a timely manner. You just show something based on context, or like you know, at one o'clock something appears. But maybe you can have something that's more predictable. Someone can tap on and get the information they need. Um, you can ex <coughs> excuse me. You can extend the watch face experience. You can open like a micro app. You know, you can um, 
trigger an external service. You can check in into a place by just tapping a complication or just tap the, the, on the screen by just one single tap for the whole watch face. Or it can cause just an aesthetic change. Maybe you just want to please the user. Maybe you want to social something fun. Maybe you're just going to change the color. You know, like maybe it's a picture of your, your child. And they send you a picture, tap on it, and you zoom in on the picture. So there are many things you can do with watch faces. So, I mean, it's up to you to design the best experience. But I think, you know, this is just a little primer to see, uh, introduce you, like, on, on the thinking of interactive watch faces. So here's, like, some key principles that you maybe want to observe when you design watch faces, interactive watch faces. Uh, make them predictable. So when you tap on a watch face and something random happens, it's not very predictable, right? So you want people to just know what's going to happen. It doesn't, you can show a surprise, but they just need to know that something will happen when you tap on it. Make it relevant, right? So don't make, make every tap count. Don't make users uh, you, uh, <clears throat> lose their time by just tapping on something and then you say you want to look at the weather and then you show like the stock ticker. It doesn't make any sense, right? Try to make it more relevant as you go. And uh, make it immediate, you know, like when you optimize your code, make um, interactive watch faces that are fast, that don't have any latency. So because sometimes when you tap on something and nothing happens, you tap again, and then you're not capturing the right state. So it's, let's try to like make things very quick as possible. And, you know, make it immediate so it makes it to a better user experience. Um, so here are just like a very few examples of like where interactive watch faces can work really well, like in terms of use cases. You know, like maybe you want to share a picture with someone, or you say you get a, snick, a nugget of information, you tap on it and you expand to see more. Maybe you want to connect with someone, you know, like maybe you have a paired experience. We have a, a watch face called uh, Together that you can pair with another watch, so you're immediately connected. So when you, you can tap on the, on the watch face and send some kind of a, a emotional kind of signal. You can make little games. So you can make a, a, <clears throat> a little uh, game where someone taps on the watch face and you jump to do something else. You can complete a task, let's say, a task is triggered by something that happened throughout the day, and can you just say, okay, I'm done with this? You can delight, you can have fun, you can do a lot of things. Those are just the kind of basic examples of how to think about interactive watch face in terms of use cases. Um, so we have a lot of interactions in Android Wear, and most of it is reserved by the system. So for example, if you look at uh, this table here, the ones in the middle are totally reserved by the system. So you can't swipe left or right on the watch face. When you swipe down, you, you pull the, what you call, notification shade. So all those things are reserved. And there's a couple on that are blocked. You can't pinch and zoom. For watch faces, what we decided on is just to have single tap. And why just single tap? You may ask, like, why don't not double tap or long press? All those, all those interactions, like everything that has a, an additional tap would cause latency because you have to measure the time. And then users are waiting for something to happen. And you know, we decided to, de to do it very simple so people know like, when you tap on a watch face, you're only going to interact with the watch face. That way, we make all the other uh, uh, interactions reserved for the system, so we make that distinction clear so users understand that you should make clear that everything that's done by the user is uh, <coughs> intentional, not, a, not an accident. OK, so now I'm going to go through a couple of examples, and then I'm going to show you a demo afterwards. Um, pretty much like what I want to show you here is like ways of thinking of like how you can use uh, interactive watch faces to design your experience. So you can decide, uh, it's up to you to decide like how you're going to interact with the watch face. You can tap on the whole watch face, which is kind of more forgiving. You just tap on without looking or you, on a specific target, which will require the user to look at the watch face and decide where to tap. So this adds a little more involvement from the user aspect, but those are different routes you can take. So in the more forgiving side, for example, you can just tap on a watch face just to change the background color, right? You can just cycle, tap on the watch face, cycle through, and just maybe go back to the first element of the list, or you know, we can just do some random changes. But that's more like, <clears throat> excuse me, to just uh, uh, be more forgiving, we are using here just the whole watch face. You can also use the whole watch face if you want to change the whole state of the watch face. So here, for example, I'm using kind of a weather watch face. We have the weather icons in there. Once you tap on the watch face, you just replace the, the, uh, the background with the temperature, and you tap back to go back to the previous state. So in this way, for example, you're changing the whole state. You're not specifically changing a specific area of the UI. 
Um, if you want to change a specific error of the UI, you can just have to design the type targets around the error that you want to change. And here is a very uh, basic example of like you have a little star. Once you tap on it, you can change, cause a specific change to that part of the UI. Following this principle, you can tap on a specific area, and this area can expand to reveal information inline, and then you can tap back to go back. For example, in this example, we just have like a complication that shows you a step counter. And when you tap on the, on the complication, you would expand in line and you would reveal my information. So that way, it's, uh, you don't have to get out of your favorite watch face. You don't have to open a micro app. You don't have to look at a notification. The information that you need is there. And if you want to go back to the watch face, you do a single tap again. You can have an approach that once you tap on a specific icon, you would open a micro app. So you may lose a little context, but if your micro app is designed in a way that makes sense in combination with the watch face, sometimes when you can release an APK that comes with the watch face and the micro app, you tap on that uh, uh, complication or the target on the watch face, you open the micro app, go about your experience, and then you swipe away to go back to the watch face. And maybe you can even have a combined approach. You can have an inline expansion that shows more information, and then you see the information you need, and you say, like, oh, perhaps I want to know more. You can also pair this with open on your phone as well. But you can just say, OK, I look at my steps. So oh, I want to know what my history is. I want to see like other kinds of activities that I'm doing, that I'm tracking. So you just tap that, the, that complication, open the micro app. When you go back, you go back to the initial state of the watch face. Um, right now, I'm going to show you a demo. Can you switch, please, to the camera so I can just uh, do a demo on the watch? Can you want to see my screen? All right. Someone was calling me, I think. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of watch faces that actually use uh, uh, interactivity in a clever way. So this is a watch face called Timer. The watch faces that I'm going to show today, they're by us too. They are uh, a good partner of, of ours that develops a lot of watch faces for Android Wear. So this one is called Timer. As you see here, there's a lot of tap targets around the watch face. And let's say I want to have a timer for 20 minutes. I would just tap in this, and then it starts counting. It's a very minimal interaction, but it's very effective. When you tap, you see the thing happening right away, and it's the timer starting, starts to count down. You can change the timer at any time. Demo gods are not helping me. I'm sorry. All right, so. OK, so I'm, I just changed the timer to uh, 20 minutes, and it starts counting. Uh, they have another layout for this. I'm not going to show this today. But you can see by just one single tap, you can actually make the, the, the watch face more interesting. So you're pretty much combining two watch faces in one, right? So you have your normal watch face plus your timer. Uh, here you're seeing the uh, always on mode that just removes a lot of the, the uh, essential info like, uh, information that needs a lot of uh, display uh, pixels. And it just focuses on the essentials and removes any interactivity. If you want to start again, you just tap, and then you can do it. So I'm going to cancel this timer. I'm going to show you another watch face. So if you want to change watch faces in Android Wear, you just long press, and you get into the watch face picker. So this, this is another watch face by us two. It's a very basic one. Uh, I'm sorry that the colors are not showing so well. So basically, the only interaction that you have in this watch face is like when you tap, you can just change colors. You go through it, you see like once you tap, the reaction is immediate, and they sh use kind of what we call a material like ripple. It's a, a circle that uh, grows from the center, and that's how they review the next color. And I think that they have a limited selection of color combinations, and I think they have 10. So you just uh, cycle through, or even less. You cycle through, and you know, it doesn't do more than that. It just shows you the color, but it's kind of a nice touch. It's like I'm feeling like having a new color. You just tap on it, and provides delight. Right. Um, then I'm going to show you like what we um, I call this like the the Uber uh, in, uh, interactive watch face. I'm sorry if that crashed. Um, <laughs> I promise this was working before. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Unfortunately, my demo broke. <laughs> but um, 
if, if you look for interactive watch faces, can you switch to the slides, please, again? Um, if you uh, look for interactive watch faces on the Play Store, you're going to find already like hundreds of watch faces. And um, that one specifically that I wanted to show is called Bits. And it's pretty much a combination of different complications that you can configure. And once you tap on the watch face, you would expand in line to reveal more information. Uh, all right. So, wrong way. Okay, so like before we uh, end the presentation, I'm gonna get into like very small technical details about like uh, um, the touch specs that you have to deal with when you design a watch face. So Android has a minimal uh, touch target of 48 dp, and a dp depends on, it's a device pixel. It's kind of a relative uh, measurement. Uh, a device that has uh, a very high resolution, we have more uh, pixels within that square. So the minimal suggested size for Android is 48 pixels. So for us, we suggest using an, a, a, a touch target of 90 pixels, just to be more forgiving. You don't want people to just look at your watch and just trying to figure out where they're going to tap. Uh, and the same applies for like, the safety gaps between each uh, uh, tap target. If you look at the watch face that I showed before, the one with the timer, it, it was like they had very clear tap targets because they drew a circle around it, but they were very generous with the tap target size plus the space in between. So you would not tap in, a, in the, the one before, not in the one after. So make sure when you design your watch faces that the tap targets are uh, giving sufficient space for the user to interact without having to fidget with the watch face. So when you design for multiple targets, just try to find a logical grouping. Um, don't make like a random combination of targets, nor try to use different tap target sizes. If you do so, just make sure that the, tar uh, the target sizes are intentional and it makes sense to the user. So in the example that I actually said before, they actually drew an outline where the tap target is. So if you want to use different tap targets, make sure the user understands where they are. Because sometimes if you, there's, in the beginning of this process, we worked uh, with certain partners, and some of the early versions of the watch faces, because it was not, we are actually developing the guidelines, we saw that sometimes there were like multiple tap targets in the same area and the other area didn't have any other tap targets and people didn't know where to tap. And once they tap, things are not occurring because you're actually tracking the information from another target. It's just kind of more like logical rules of layout that you can apply from, uh, for watch faces. And um, in general, like for Android Wear, we try to do things glanceable. So like when you look at stuff, you should try to get it immediately what it is. So you shouldn't just waste the uh, user's time to so just trying to figure out, like, when they look at their watch face, oh, where should I tap again? Where is the size of the target? What should I do, like, when it disappears? So just try to make it clear as you go. Okay, so um, if you want to learn more about, like, interactive watch faces, we're going to have a, a little workshop at the, the Code Lab room. From, and then we have office hours from 2 to 4 p.m. You can also check, check our interactive watch face sample. It's on GitHub. And if you want to know more, just join our community uh, of Android Wear developers. And um, we're going to talk about later, uh, the next uh, talk about Interact uh, Always On Watch Face uh, apps. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer.